In late autumn of 1952, the American Forces Network made the front page of the London Times and caused a sensation across Europe with a special Halloween program. Program director Hunt Downs asked for three volunteers among the AFN announcing staff. He took them and a couple of engineers to the old Frankenstein Castle near Darmstadt. They arrived at the dismal, fog-shrouded castle just before midnight, which was airtime. The announcer explained that the myth of the Frankenstein Castle claims Dr. Frankenstein's monster returns every 100 years. And they added, this is the night. Each of the three announcers was given a walkie-talkie and a pen-light flashlight and sent to different parts of the castle to report on what they saw and heard. There was no script. It was completely ad-lib. And what a psychological experiment. Announcer Carl Nelson's assignment was to enter the Frankenstein family crypt far beneath the old castle. He was told he'd be the first man to go down there in decades. What he didn't know was that the show's producer had set up a statue in the center of the crypt, and at the height of Nelson's self-induced fear, the producer pulled a string and toppled the statue. The following was aired just as it happened. You and I together are going to see what is in the old tomb. We're going to shut the door behind us. And right now, all 700 years of the history of this castle comes off in the view as we stand here in almost utter darkness, scraping our feet to watch our way. And we actually see nothing as yet, as our eyes have not become accustomed to the darkness, as this little flashlight does not throw out very much light. If a monster were in here, if such fable be true, he could be right next to us. We have knocked over something here that... Oh. Excuse me just one second, but... What... Seems like this is some type of a... Some type of a... Mache, maybe something that... Oh, was, when that fell, ladies and gentlemen, you can imagine what ran through our mind. It seemed like some type of a... Trying to kick it with our foot, something maybe that looks like a church window that may have been used in a burial service or something, and we're bending over to try to see. Thank goodness it isn't. We can report it. It isn't alive or anything near being alive. We're shining our light up on the wall as we heard something. Yes, but we, our light is fading and it's on something that looks like a statue. Yes, it is just a statue, but a, an ungodly statue where we're kicking at a chain. It, we're going to try to... This is ridiculous, ladies and gentlemen. We are scared because of what fell down on the floor here, but we're going to go up and examine this statue right now. It is a horrible-looking statue, much like the monster, perhaps something put here years ago, maybe the original mold. It is very eerie, to say the least, as this misty moon is coming through the window. But we don't believe in these things, and we're going to walk up and touch this to see perhaps what it could be made of. It may be of wax or plaster. No, it, it couldn't. It, it seemed to move as we came up upon it. No, I felt this is ridiculous. Not wax. I'm getting out of here. Please, God, no. Help. Help, please, help. Please. Can't you hear me? Can't you hear me out there? No. 
At this point, we should explain that Nelson tried to get out of the crypt only to find the door locked. He fainted. With the mic open, the crew rushed to his side. The last thing listeners heard was someone saying, This thing has gone far enough. Let's get out of here. Back in the network's headquarters in Frankfurt, the switchboard was jammed by callers wondering if the air hunters did get away from the castle unscathed. They did, of course, but only after a good portion of Europe nervously shivered with Carl Nelson at the Frankenstein Castle. Every time I listen to that, I just admire this guy, how he tried to remain a reporter, and even though he was frightened, he tried to maintain composure. If that were me, I'd...